today, as of recording anyway, I have no internet. Um, it was a bit glitchy yesterday, it dropped out for a couple of hours and it was okay this morning and then for the last three or four hours it's just been nah. Now I don't have Wi-Fi, I just have a 4G signal which is fine for what I need and I'm with Smarty who piggyback off of three. So you're never quite sure if it's your phone that's going wrong or if it is actually an internet issue. So I went over the road to the supermarket because I get free Wi-Fi there and um, typed it in and they are having maintenance issues. So at least I know what the problem is. It happened once towards the end of last year but um, I don't have anything like massively urgent to do that needs the internet. Uh, there were a few things I needed to get done, but it'll wait another day. There's nothing desperate. But it's really weird, isn't it? When your internet goes down, you have no idea how much you rely on it. So I can like put a film on, I guess, that's um, like I've got downloaded to my laptop or something. Or I could put some music on. Um, I have chores. I've done some chores already. I could do some more. But it is really weird how we're just so used to picking up our phones or, you know, logging into the internet on, on a laptop and just doing stuff. And I keep going to pick up my phone to put on a podcast or to check the news headlines or check my emails and realising nothing works. And you really do forget how reliant you are on it when you're cut off. It feels really strange. In kind of a good way. I don't mind not having the internet if I don't have things that I have to do. But everything is internet based now. So I need to do my energy meter readings. And I can't submit those. Although thankfully I don't have to do it until tomorrow. But I can't submit those because I can't get onto the internet. And had some um, I have a bill to pay online can't do that <laughs> uh, it's just so weird and there are some channels and things that I follow that are to do with like prepping and what happens if we have another COVID pandemic and there's all these people that since the pandemic have kind of learnt their lessons that you can't trust the system, that you can't rely on them up top to look after you at the bottom. And there are people who are finding different ways to, to prep for if things go down again. Like having a store cupboard of tinned food and shelf stable things like packets. Um, they're drying um, fruit and veg and, and packing stuff into their freezers but you know when you watch things like the old the walking dead like the original walking dead and um there's a couple of others the names have completely i've completely forgotten now where literally everything goes down and, and some of these preppers are people who are squirreling away money like if if everything went down money wouldn't mean anything you know, you couldn't buy your way out of the kind of potential tragedy that could happen because money would be meaningless. People would need um, a roof over their head, which could be anything. Um, they'll need food. They'll need the ability to make fire. They'll need cutting blades so that they can cut wood, cut food, things like that. It'll be back to basics. You know, if you're one of these, these guys in Silicon Valley, I've heard about these guys who are, you know, building these big, like, protective systems under the ground where they're going to live if there's a tragedy. And they're doing hydroponics, so they're growing vegetables underground so they can live and they're sorting out their investments. I mean, 
if it all goes to pot, no one's going to be working for those people and running all that stuff. They'll be on their own. And it's just this complete inability to understand that if everything goes down, you're going to be living like we were in medieval times. It'll be about being able to eat, being able to stay warm, potentially being able to travel. But, you know, horses and on foot are pretty much going to be what you're going to be with because there won't be any petrol. There won't be any way to fuel a car of any sort. Um, unless you're entirely running off solar power. But then those solar power systems are generally attached to the grid, so I don't think that would work either. So literally everything would just fall to bits. So when you have no internet, <laughs> just for like half a day, and you're sitting there thinking, oh my God, what do I do with my time? Because I can't go on the internet. And I know there'll be a whole bunch of you going, oh, for goodness sakes, I hardly use the internet anyway. I've got a dumb phone or whatever. Um, <laughs> it's just so weird to not have the internet. And everything goes so quiet. It's really quiet here today. It's Saturday afternoon and it's really quiet. And I don't know if that's because everybody's internet has gone down. Because there's no noise coming from downstairs from my neighbours. Morrison's was jam-packed. Everyone's out doing their Saturday shop. Never come down to a Morrison's or a supermarket at the weekend. Worst time to go. Plus there's no deals. Although I did manage to get a full pint of milk for 87p. That's pretty good. So I took that because I'm almost out of milk. I'm also thinking about um, getting another counter countertop freezer for my kitchen. And I'll just, um, I'll show you what I mean, what I have at the moment. So when I moved into my flat, I bought this um, Fridge Master countertop caravan freezer because there is no freezer in this flat. There's an under-counter fridge with an icebox. Absolute rubbish and the icebox is broken anyway. So I'd bought this already knowing that I needed a freezer but I had nowhere to put it. And for a while, it did sit up on a countertop. And then I decided I actually wanted to get my worktops back. So it's ended up sitting, it's still in the kitchen. It's a very small kitchen. Um, and it's up against, I mean, this radiator's never on. Oh. Yeah, this radiator's never on. So I have it there. And then uh, about a year and a half ago, I bought another one that I saw, so that one at the bottom there, second hand, was £30. And this other one is, I think it's one of the cheap, the basic Argos range. I bought that one second hand, £20. Slightly smaller. And the reason I bought this was, A, I don't have the space in my kitchen for an undercounter full-size freezer. But also, this is the only thing that I can lift up the stairs, up the upper flight of stairs. I can't lift a regular sized under counter freezer by myself. So that's why one reason why I got that. It'll fit in the back of my car and I just wanted to be more mobile because I didn't know how long I was going to be here. And it's also something that's relatively easy to sell on. People always seem to want them. So this is the second one. And these two are full. Um, yeah, so both those little freezers are now full. They're not tiny, but they don't have a lot of space. The inside capacity isn't as big as it looks from the outside. So I have those two. And I'm thinking about getting another one. So I've always bought mine on eBay second hand. So I've set up a, a, a search alert that if any come up within a reasonable driving distance from where I am, um, under £30, it'll let me know. So I'm going to see if I can get another one. I'm not in a rush for it. I'm not desperate for it. So I'm just going to see if one comes up. I'm only going to a 10-mile distance. There's, there's not much point in sticking my neck out far for something like that. But then I could have three on top. And then it doesn't even mean that I need to use it all the time. But if I have, have a lot of stuff 
that I'm trying to keep long term like at the moment it's just full of things that I've managed to buy which I normally wouldn't have there's a lot of fresh meat that I've frozen a lot of vegetables um, uh, various uh, well when I get my milk and I freeze the milk in one pint bottles it can be quite hard to fit it in so it'd be nice to have a third one almost as a like a breathing space so that if I have a lot in I can fire that up and then also when I want to clean out or defrost the other ones I've got other I've got another one to use as a space to put stuff while I'm defrosting because I really need to defrost these freezers now it makes a big difference to the space so that's on my little list of potential again halfway between a want and a need it would be nice to have the flexibility that if I see more things that are cheap or maybe I get a glut of fruit in the autumn like when I'm out blackberrying or you know getting the windfall apples it'd be nice to know that I have the space to be able to take on all that extra um, extra freezable stuff if it's available so that's my little plan for potential buy in February but as I say I'm not, it's not urgent but it'd be nice to have that little bit of space um, for extra stuff if I can get it <sighs> no internet <laughs> so I'm talking to you guys I've done I've done the housework today I've been out and done a clean this morning um, ah, that's the other thing. Um, so when I went over to um, to the supermarket to check um, the internet to see if I could find out if there was actually a maintenance issue, which of course there was, um, I had an email pop through from the agency that I get the cleaning work from and they are upping our hourly rate from the 1st of March. Now the, um, the minimum wage goes up I think in April we were already above the minimum wage. I think the minimum wage at the moment is is it ten forty seven or something. We were being paid eleven an hour, and now we're going to go up to eleven seventy five. So we will still be above the minimum wage. Um, it's not an enormous amount of money, but on a, a weekly basis, when when you have that number of jobs, and against all the other things that I do as well, don't forget. That's all right. I can cope with that. Um, that was a nice little surprise in my inbox when I went into the supermarket. And I think that was pretty much it, really. But that was a nice thing to have. So I can, I can fiddle around with my spreadsheets this afternoon and start adding those calculations. Um, that'll be a nice one to add. Sunday morning, so the next day basically, went off to Morrison's this morning, um, all the internet seems to be working again, I didn't get back online until I think it was about 5 o'clock, but it was another couple of hours before my phone tethering would connect to my laptop, I don't know what was going on there, I don't know if it was related to the signal issues, um, there didn't seem to be anything wrong with the settings, but anyway, so it was about seven eight o'clock in the evening before I could get on and do stuff that I needed to uh, because I couldn't tether my phone to my laptop and that's something always to remember that um, because of the way I work you know, if something happens like if my phone breaks or something I am pretty much cut off I would have to take my laptop to the supermarket or to the library and use the Wi-Fi there to get back online say for instance to buy a new phone because um, I'm kind of cut off, I suppose, in some ways. So it's a bit weird because I don't have Wi-Fi and then the 4Gs as a backup. It's 4G or nothing. Anyway, so not much to buy in um, Morrison's this morning, which is probably just as well because I was talking yesterday about how I've run out of freezer space and the things that I did buy um, are fridge items. It looks a lot healthier than it sometimes does. And uh, I'm trying to... I'm trying to use up some of the, the veg that I've had in my freezer since probably the middle of last year. I've got some of those um, casserole packets and what have you. But uh, I managed to get a few 
slight bargains in Morrison's today which will help see me through the next week. I probably will go along on Tuesday evening and have another look but um so yeah so we had a little look around to see what we could find before I went in to do Sunday mornings clean and of course we're just a few days off that dreaded um, money maker for the supermarkets Valentine's Day the sea of flowers this weekend um, just crazy I wonder how many of those will end up dying and being thrown away before they get sold it's just crazy there was something on um, I was watching uh, the Martin Lewis show and it was something like the great majority of people think it's just a, a marketing ploy by supermarkets and retailers to make money. Nobody thinks it's romantic. You shouldn't have to just use one day a year as your, oh look I love you message. You should be doing nice things all year. Just be a nice person, you know. If, um, if your idea of showing your partner that you love them is to once a year buy overpriced flowers, um, I guess it's whatever suits you. But, um... I'm glad I don't have to bother with that fiasco anymore. <laughs> oh, that's one less thing to worry about, isn't it? It's Monday afternoon and the bloody internet's gone down again. So Sunday, yesterday, it was fine. And I arranged to have a Zoom with my parents in the evening. And then we were about half an hour in and suddenly the signal died and it turned out they'd had a power cut. Which didn't come back on for several hours. So it's been a weekend of glitchiness and things going wrong. I got a few things done this morning but I have a load of internet based things I need to do. There's banking stuff and I've got a edit some videos for YouTube and stuff and it's just really really annoying because that list of things that I wanted to do I now can't do. I have some things that I want to record for YouTube. I've got some um, how to's to do. Some people have given me some ideas but I can't get my head around it today. I just feel so tired. I've been weird not sleepless nights, like really heavy sleep and then waking up and then having lots of weird dreams. So my sleeping pattern's a little bit out of sync at the moment. And I just do not feel with it. It really does feel like a Monday morning. Which is weird for someone that doesn't have a, a 9 to 5, 5 day a week routine. Um, but if I was working in an office I'd probably feel like this every Monday. Anyway, so... I'm probably going to use this as a wrap up for this weekly vlog because um, there's other bits and pieces in here and I have lots of other little things. I've, I've made a few shorter ones because doing the longer vlogs is good. I like putting all the bits together and then also um, some of them are just longer because that's the way they are. As a, as a one off thing but I don't think that people's attention spans are very long I think the average watch time is about two and a half minutes or something for me so I don't know that people just skip through or just stop or what's going on I mean I follow lots of channels and I'm careful that the channels I follow are channels I will want to watch. So when they put up an update, and it doesn't matter if it's 10 minutes or 45 minutes, I will watch through to the end because I followed that channel for a reason. But I'm guessing people skip through a lot. Um, people are dipping in and out. No one has much staying power. I mean, maybe these are the people who like adverts in television programmes because every... 10 minutes they've got to be getting up and moving around um, so I'm going to do a, f a few shorter ones so where some of them I would put into like two or three I don't know two or three seven minute recordings into one thing I'm just going to upload them as little separates 
I mean, they're still long by comparison. I think the shortest one is about seven minutes long. So that's still long for people that only have a, a two minute attention span. But I'm sure there are those of you out there who watch through to the end. I always watch through to the end of channels that I like. Sometimes there'll be a one-off video that isn't really of interest to me. It might be on a subject that I'm just not into. Or they might have diverted from their normal way of recording and it just doesn't resonate with me. So I will skip some videos, but most of the time um, I will watch the whole thing because I'm interested in that person and, and what they're getting up to. So anyway, so I'm going to finish here. This is another quite long one. Lots of you will probably skip watch. Um, for those of you that watch the entire thing, drop me a comment. I'd like to know how many of you actually do watch the entire, the entire video. And I think some of you out there do. I know some of you that have joined my channel quite late have gone back to the beginning and started going through everything. Which is quite long because that's like 13 months now. That's quite a long time. Actually, it's probably almost 14 months now. Um, but yeah, let, let me know. I'm interested to know what some people consider too long. What's too short. Maybe you like just all long videos, say over 10 minutes. Maybe you like a mixture. So there'll be something you can dip into for two minutes. Something that will take... Something that you can watch when you're cooking dinner or something. I mean, I know that uh, a lot of people like to have it on in the background, almost like a vlog, when they're doing other things. And I do that a lot, because some of the vlogs that I follow are quite long, like 45 minutes plus. But they're also not ones that you need to watch, as long as you can hear what's going on, because they're, they're chatting to you and nattering away. That's all you need to know. So, although I do watch everything say watch everything play everything to the end very often I'm doing other things so I can hear what's going on um, and it still makes as much sense but I think that's that's just as good I don't mind that so if you're doing that I'm interested in that as well I know that some of you do that because you've told me anyway gonna finish here um, hope you're having a hope you have an okay week I don't know when this will be coming out um, and given that my internet's down, God knows when I'm going to get it edited because I can't get online for anything at the moment. Really annoying. Uh, the sun's out. We have blue sky. Um, <laughs> my brain does not work today at all. Oh my God, I'm such a mess. Come on, spring. I am desperate for it now. Sunshine, warmth, long days, creativity, waking up earlier. Oh my goodness. Bring it on. Just bring it on.